In this section, we're going to talk about integration by substitution, which is our first integration technique that goes beyond the reverse power rule or straightforward antiderivatives. Substitution, or we're going to call this U substitution, is a technique to find antiderivatives of functions. This is a very useful technique and is going to be used extensively in all future math courses as well. In Calc 2, you're going to talk about a lot of other different techniques to find antiderivatives. Substitution is going to be one that is going to be used throughout all of those techniques. The basis behind this technique is that this goes backwards through the derivative rule, the chain rule. So in order to understand substitution, it's good to understand what the chain rule says. The chain rule is the derivative rule that corresponds to function composition, or the derivative of f of g of x is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. And I like to think about this in three different steps. One, you need to, uh, I guess before this, you need to identify the inside and outside functions. So the inside function here is g of x, and the outside function is f of something, or f of x. Then when doing the chain rule, there are three steps. You are going to take the derivative of the outside, you are going to leave the inside alone, and then you're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And when thinking about going backwards through that derivative rule, we're going to see in our steps that we're going to go backwards through each of those steps. So we're just going to kind of indicate what I mean by going backwards through those steps. The opposite of taking the derivative of the outside function is we are going to find the antiderivative of the outside function. The second point is the one that doesn't work perfectly here, but the opposite of leaving the inside alone, we're just going to say is going to be leaving the inside alone. In both of these steps, we need to take care of uh, not messing with that inside function. And then thirdly, instead of multiplying by the derivative of the inside, we are going to divide by the derivative of the inside. Now this is just ideas and kind of understanding how this is going to be going backwards through the chain rule. But we're going to have a step-by-step -step process to understand how to do u-substitution. So we're going to break this up into six different steps. Uh, most of these steps are very, very quick. The hardest step here, I believe, is to identify what is the inside and outside function. Once you're able to identify that correctly, everything else is pretty plug and chug, the same thing every single time. After we identify what the inside and outside function is, we're going to do our substitution. Instead of having our maybe difficult inside function, we are going to let u equal that inside function as a simplification of that. We are then going to find the derivative of u with respect to x, du dx, because we need to divide by the derivative of the inside. And we're going to rewrite our integral in terms of u, and that means including dx. We have to rewrite dx in terms of u. After we do that, we should have a straightforward antiderivative. And we're going to integrate in terms of u. Then, after that, we're going to put our answer back in terms of x. 
So let's jump into our first example here. We have the integral of 2x cosine of x squared. And for all of these examples, it's worth noting why is this not a straightforward antiderivative. Or you can ask yourself, is there a function that I know has a derivative of 2x cosine of x squared? And I believe it is pretty quick to realize that there is no derivative rule that just gives that to us right away. So we're going to have to think about u substitution and function composition. Our first step said to identify what is the inside and outside function. So we need to identify where is there a function composition that takes place here. And this is going to be the cosine of x squared that gives us our function composition. The 2x is part of the function, but it's going to be something else that we're going to deal with later. The only real function composition that's happening here is this cosine of x squared. And in that case, we have that the inside function is the x squared. And the outside function is the cosine of something. Or we can write that as cosine of x if you want. Once you've identified what the inside and outside function is, the next step is very easy. We're just going to let u equal whatever that inside function is. We are rewriting everything in terms of a simplified u. x squared is a more difficult function to deal with. u is easier. Step three, we're going to find the derivative of u. That is du dx. In this case, that's going to be 2x. It's the derivative of x squared with respect to x. So we're going to write this as du dx is equal to 2x. Step 4, we want to rewrite the integral in terms of u. And this is the next hardest step here is to translate everything in terms of u. First thing we're going to do is we are going to write dx in terms of du. To do that, we're going to use that du dx equals 2x, and we can say that du is equal to 2x dx. That's by multiplying dx on both sides. And then we can divide by 2x, and we get du over 2x is equal to dx. Now with all of that, we can plug everything back in and change the integral in terms of u. So what we have here is the integral of 2x cosine of not x squared, but cosine of u. And now, instead of writing dx, I'm going to write du over 2x. Now, this is going to work out if I can cancel out these x's. I have a 2x in the numerator and a 2x in the denominator. Those cancel out. And I am left with the integral of cosine of u du. I have now rewritten this integral that had x's in it, and it's now all in terms of u, including du instead of dx. That dx is very important, in this case du now. Step 5 is once I have that antiderivative, or that, uh, that integral in terms of u, I can now find the straightforward, hopefully easy to find antiderivative with respect to u. And this is going to be the antiderivative of cosine is positive sine of u. And since this is an indefinite integral, I need the plus c. Then the very last step is I want to put it back in terms of the variable that I was talking about before. I'm going to write this as sine of x squared plus c. 
we don't need to do this, but we could check our answer just to make sure that we have the right one. We can do that with antiderivatives fairly easily. We can take the derivative of sine of x squared plus c, or sine of x squared, and make sure that we get 2x cosine of x squared. And hopefully not surprisingly, we need to use the chain rule to take that derivative. To do that, we are going to find the derivative of the outside. That's going to be positive cosine. Leave the inside alone. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is going to give us 2x. So this is the right answer there. Let's just go and look at this problem once again and think about what happened here. First, we said that we should be going backwards through the chain rule, those three steps. At some point, we found the antiderivative of the outside function. Cosine of something was the outside function. And at this step, we found the antiderivative of the outside function. That's going to happen in each and every step here, or each and every case. We also, at some point, divided by the derivative of the inside function. And leaving the inside alone is just making sure that we're taking our integral in terms of u, that we're not trying to mess with that in any way. A couple things to look out for in this problem, uh, or another way to deal with it, I should say, is when you have the integral of 2x cosine of x squared dx, another way to think about this, and I believe this is the way that the book really emphasizes, is that you could rewrite 2x dx as du. That's from that equation right there. So you could rewrite the entire thing 2x dx in terms of u instead of thinking about crossing out the 2x's. This is a personal choice that you can make. It doesn't really make a difference either way. I think it's much easier to just divide by the derivative and make sure things cancel out. You have to remember that you have to cancel out all x's in the equation. You have to have just u's in your integral. That's something that you can deal with. Let's see another example now. This time we have x squared square root of 3x cubed minus 4. And again, there's not a function that we know that has a derivative that's equal to this function. So we need to do something else, and we're going to again use u substitution. We need to identify what is the inside and the outside function, or it will be helpful to identify what is the inside and outside function. The inside function here is going to be 3x cubed minus 4, and the outside function is going to be square root of something or square root of x. And from this point, we should be able to say a lot about this integral. So before we go through all the steps, let's just map out what's going to happen. If this is the correct inside and outside function, I should see the derivative of the inside function, which is something squared, x squared, somewhere else in the problem. And I see that x squared outside of that square root. This is the derivative, we'll say almost the derivative of the inside function. In order for all the x's to cancel out in the fourth step of u substitution, the derivative of the inside needs to cancel out. So we should see that somewhere else in the problem. That is a good indication that something else is going to work or that this technique is going to work. Another thing that we see is that we have the outside function is square root of x. So at some point in this problem, we should have to do the antiderivative of square root of u du, 
or the antiderivative of u to the one half du, which would give us a two thirds u to the three halves plus c. We should see this as our step because this is going to be the antiderivative of the outside function. Knowing just what the inside and outside function, which isn't actually needed in this problem, is very useful to identify some key components of u substitution. Let's go through the work and we'll see how those play out. So step two here, we should let u equal the inside function. In this case, it's 3x cubed minus 4. And step three, we are going to find the derivative of 3x cubed minus 4 with respect to x, that is du dx. And that will give us a 9x squared. We said that the x squared is like the derivative of the inside. It only differs by a constant, and that's what we need. Uh, we can bring constants in front of derivatives or antiderivatives, so it doesn't really make much of a difference. So, step four is I need to rewrite everything in terms of u, including dx. So I'm going to rewrite that equation, du equals 9x squared dx. And we can say that that is going to be dx is going to be du over 9x squared. When I rewrite everything in terms of the integral, in terms of u, so rewriting everything in the integral, we have our x squared that we haven't touched yet. That's hopefully going to cancel out. We have our square root, square root of u times, not dx, but du over 9x squared. And this works out because we have an x squared on the top and an x squared on the bottom. They cancel out, but not everything cancels out. There is a 1 ninth constant that is still left after we cancel out those x squareds. The 9 is in the denominator, so that is a 1 ninth. We have a 1 ninth, the integral of square root of u, du. We said that we should have the integral of square root of u du. There is a 1 ninth factor that maybe we didn't see at the very beginning. Now we can do this antiderivative. This is now step 5. Do the antiderivative. That's going to give us 1 ninth, that constant factor, times, we said this should be a 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. That is going backwards through the power rule, the reverse power rule plus c. We'll simplify this. This is going to give us a 1 27th u to the 3 halves. And step 6 says that we should rewrite this in terms of x. So this is going to be 3x cubed minus 4 to the 3 halves power plus c. One note here before we move on. We said that you don't have to divide by the 9x squared. You could have written this as just the du equals 9x squared dx. But you would have to rewrite this as just x squared dx to successfully put this back into the integral, which means that you should have a du over 9. And since you just have to divide by that 9 anyways, I think it's easier just to divide by everything and make sure things cancel out. Whatever way works best for you is fine, though. All right, let's go to another example. Example 3, we have 2t minus 4 over 2t squared minus 8t. Step 1, identify what is the inside function and what is the outside function. In this case, the inside function is going to be 2t squared minus 8t, and it is inside the function 1 over something squared, or 1 over x squared. Now, 
In order for this to work, this is our correct inside and outside function. We should have the derivative, which is 4t minus 8. That should be somewhere else in the problem. And that is like our 2t minus 4. It's not exactly that. But we're going to see that it's going to work out there. So that is one thing that we're looking for, is the derivative of the inside function somewhere else in the problem. In fact, we're going to see that this is actually 2 times 2t minus 4. But we're going to see that later on. The other thing that we're going to have here is we should have the integral of 1 over u squared du, the antiderivative of the outside function. That's something that we should be doing in this problem. All right, step two, we're going to let u equal the inside function, that 2t squared minus 8t. And step three, we are going to find the derivative of u, not with respect to x, but with respect to t, because that's our variable we're dealing with. I should say this isn't 1 over x squared, but 1 over t squared, because it's in terms of t. And this derivative is going to be 4t minus 8. Putting everything in terms of u, we should solve for dt. So du equals parentheses 4t minus 8 times dt, or dt is equal to du over 4t minus 8. Plugging everything back in into the integral, we have the integral of 2t minus 4 divided by u squared times du over 4t minus 8. Now at the very beginning, it doesn't seem like the t's cancel out, but we said that we can rewrite 4t minus 8 as... 2 times 2t two minus 4. And then we can cancel out a 2t minus 4 on the top and the bottom, and we would be left with a 1 half, that 1 half coming from that 2 down there, a 1 half integral of 1 over u squared du. That integral is going to be the same as, if you want to write this as 1 half integral of u to the negative 2 du. And this will give us a 1 half negative u to the negative 1 plus c. And steps, this is step 5, take the antiderivative. Step 6. Rewrite this in terms of x. It's going to be 2t squared minus 8t to the negative 1 plus c. Or maybe we could write that as a negative 1 over 2 times 2t squared minus 8t plus c. This is a bit of a tricky problem because you have to factor out the 2 in the 4t minus 8 at that step right there. But just be very careful of algebra. You can't do improper algebra ever, but it can really get you into problems in these substitution problems. If instead you thought that you could cancel out these two t's right there, you would be making a big mistake there and all the constants would be messed up. Make sure that your algebra is correct and you're not canceling something out that you're not allowed to cancel out. Okay, let's go over another problem. We're going to keep on getting into more increasingly difficult, kind of weird substitution problems as we go on. The process remains the same. The difficulty is really what's the inside function, what's the outside function, and getting used to steps two through six as you do it more and more. So here's one that looks much worse. We have seven halves x cubed times secant of 2x to the fourth, tangent 2x to the fourth, dx. 
And let's just think about what would be the inside and outside function. One thing that can help you identify that is to look for function composition, but more importantly, can you identify what the inside function is based on seeing the derivative of that inside function somewhere else in the problem? In this case, we could see that 2x to the fourth has a derivative of something x cubed, and I think that is a tip-off as to what the inside and outside function should be. Let's see that play out. Here we have the inside function we said might be 2x to the fourth, and the outside function would be what function is 2x to the fourth plugged into? It would be secant of something, tangent of something, or secant of x, tangent of x. And that's a weird function to have as the outside function because there are two places that you need to plug in the inside function. Let's play a little game to make sure this is going to be the right thing. The derivative of, this, of the inside function is 8x cubed, and that matches up with that x cubed outside of that secant tangent. That's a good indication that this is going to work out. We should also at some point see that we should be doing the antiderivative of secant of u tangent of u. And it is good to think about, is that an easy antiderivative to do? If it is not, then this is not a very useful thing. But this is an easy antiderivative. This is exactly uh, not the integral, but just secant of u plus c, as the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So we should see this somewhere else in the problem. So step two is we are going to let u equal the inside function. Step three, we are going to find the derivative of the inside function with respect to x. And again, that's going to be our 8x cubed using the power rule. Step four, we're going to rewrite everything in terms of u, including the dx. So we have du is equal to 8x cubed dx. That means that dx is going to be du over 8x cubed. Plugging everything back into the integral, we have a 7 halves x cubed, which we haven't touched yet, times secant of u tangent of u and then times du over 8x cubed. In order for this to work out, we have to have all the x's cancel out, and we have that happen. We have the x cubes cancel out right there. The next difficulty is how do we figure out what the constant is going to be out in front? In this case, we have a 7 halves that we can bring out in front, and we also have a 1 eighth from the dividing by 8x cubed that we can bring out in front. And again, we have the integral of secant of u tangent of u du. Everything is in terms of u, which is exactly what we want. It is a common mistake in substitution to start trying to plug in x back at this step. Remember that the reason we're putting, the in, putting this here is so that we can take the antiderivative of the outside function. This is an easy antiderivative to do. Plugging x back in here is just going to rework all the work that we did to get to this point. So here we have the constant out in front is 7 sixteenths. And we said that the antiderivative of secant tangent is secant of u plus c. Step 5 and step 6, we're going to rewrite this in terms of x. So 7 sixteenths secant of 2x to the 4th plus c. When we are rewriting the inside function as u, we are making this integral easier to do. We're just going to be rewriting it so it looks easier. 
we can't just magically rewrite this in terms of you. We have there's a cost to do that, and that cost to doing that is that derivative, that eight x cubed. You can think about we're just going to rewrite everything in terms of u, but the cost to do that is the derivative of the inside function, and hopefully that cost will cancel out with something else in the problem. So two more examples. This one is going to be difficult for a couple different reasons. One is we have bounds in the integral. This is a definite integral instead of an indefinite integral, which means that we're just going to write this because this is a definite integral. We're just going to have one extra step at the end. And that is uh, plugging in the bounds. That we learned in the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we're not going to think about the bounds um, too much until the end. But let's just go through this. We have the integral of sine of theta, cosine of theta, d theta. We need to identify what is the inside and outside function. And this is the difficulty of this problem. And I urge you to pause the video and think about what the inside function and outside function will be and to go through your guess and see if you can make this work. Do all the thetas cancel out? And are you left with an integral that is easy to do? After you've tried a few things, you may have found the correct answer, or you may have found some things that don't work. Let's run through something that doesn't work, that's very common. One thing that we could do is we could say the inside function is theta. The outside function here would be sine of something, cosine of something. But if we do this correctly, we would have u equal to theta du d theta is equal to 1, and this should just turn everything into sine of u, cosine of u, du, if you did things correctly. This is a good guess, but this doesn't do anything to help us out. This is the exact same integral as before. You just may hate the letter theta and like the letter u much better. That's the only thing this does is change theta in terms of u, and you could have done that without the nonsense of the substitution. So although that may be a function composition, that will never help just having the inside function be the single variable. There are other options you could have done, but the one that's going to work, in fact there's two that will work, and that is the inside function could be either sine of theta or cosine of theta. It will work in either way, but we're going to do the one with sine of theta. And this is inside the function, just something, or theta itself. And that's weird because it's such a simple function to deal with. But this means that we should have at some point the integral of the inside function, or the outside function, du, where instead of theta, just u du which is a simple enough integral to do. That would be 1 half u squared plus c. We should see that in the problem. Think about if I asked you to plug in sine of theta into that, you would just have sine of theta. The other thing we should look out for is the derivative of sine of theta somewhere else in the problem, and that cosine of theta, the derivative, is somewhere in the problem, and that is what we're looking for in that problem. It still works if you have it the other way around with the derivative, uh, with the inside function being cosine of theta instead. All right, here we are going to let u equal the inside function. And we're going to find the derivative with respect to theta. In this case, cosine of theta. That's somewhere else in the problem. That's good. 
And when we solve for theta, we're going to have du equals cosine of theta d theta. Or we could write this as d theta equals du over cosine of theta. Plugging this all into the integral, we have the integral of 0 to pi over 2. Sine of theta is u times a cosine of theta times du over cosine of theta. The cosine of theta is cancel out, and we're good to go, except there is one issue here, and that is that these bounds are not x values, but theta values. And in order to do this integral, we need everything in terms of u. So we need to change the bounds in terms of u. You can't do the integral unless everything is in terms of u. That includes the bounds. Now this is easy enough to do because we have a formula u equals sine of theta that tells us how to change the bounds. So if theta is equal to 0, then we have u is equal to sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0, so in this case the bound is left unchanged. We have u equal to 0. When theta equals pi over 2, this means that we have u is equal to sine of pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. So that's our new bound. And this means that we have the integral of u equals 0 to u equals 1, u du. This is 1 half u squared, not plus c, but evaluated from, if you want, u equals 0 to u equals 1. That's going to give us a 1 half 1 squared minus 1 half 0 squared, which is equal to 1 half. So the bounds on the integral, what's really changed is something at the very end of the problem. We have to change the bounds in terms of u so that we can take this integral correctly. And then we also um, just have to do nothing else different in the problem until we do those bounds. There's another way to deal with the bounds that we could just leave the bounds in terms of theta take the antiderivative, put everything back in terms of theta, and then plug in the bounds. It would be the exact same work, but it's a little more correct to write these in terms of u anyways, and I think it's a little bit quicker at the end, so we're going to do it that way, and that's the way the book does it as well. All right, we have one more problem to go through. Here we have x to the fifth times square root of x cubed plus 1, and let's see how this is going to work out. Here, the inside function is pretty clearly going to be this x cubed plus 1. And the outside function is square root of something, or square root of x. Now, in order for this to work out, we should have... The derivative 3x squared should be somewhere else in the problem. And there is a weird issue here as we have an x to the fifth left over. That is an indication that substitution may not work out. But this is a special problem that actually something nice is going to happen. And we're going to see how to deal with that in this problem. So let's run through this and see what happens. We have u is equal to x cubed plus 1. We said the derivative of that is 3x squared. 
and rewriting everything in terms of u, we should have du is equal to 3x squared dx. So dx is equal to du over 3x squared. And when we plug everything back in, something not nice is going to happen, but we're going to be able to deal with it. We have an x to the fifth square root of u times du over 3x squared. When you cancel out that x squared, we're not left with nothing on the top. We still have an x cubed left over. So this simplified here, we have a one-third, the integral of x cubed, square root of u du. Now you are never able to take an integral with respect to x and u together. This is not something that we are able to do. This is a huge red flag that something may have gone wrong, except that we can still do something with this problem. And that is we can rewrite x cubed in terms of u. We have that u is equal to x cubed plus 1. This is an equation just as you learned in pre-algebra, and you can mess with equations in any way you want. In this case, why don't we write this as x cubed equals u minus 1. So if we do that, then we can write this integral as 1 third the integral of not x cubed but u minus 1 times the square root of u du. Now that is good as long as this integral is doable but this is a doable integral if we do some algebra on that. We could rewrite this as 1 third the integral of distribute that u Maybe write this as u to the 1 half instead of square root of u. And this will give us a u to the 3 halves. That's u times u to the 1 half minus u to the 1 half du. And at this point, this is a straightforward antiderivative. We can take it. And this will give us a 1 third times a 2 fifths u to the 5 halves minus a 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. And we should write this in terms of x. This is going to be a 2 fifteenths, not u, but x cubed plus 1 to the 5 halves minus a 2 ninths, multiplying the 1 third by the negative 2 thirds, x cubed plus 1 to the 3 halves plus c. This is definitely a different kind of problem, and the key here is that this thing that we wrote at the very beginning, the u equals inside function, is an equation, and we can mess with that equation in, as long as it helps us out. Now, we could have done that in previous problems, but it may not have helped at all. The reason this works is because at the end, this is an easy antiderivative to do after distributing that square root of u into the u minus 1. So you have to be careful of using that too frequently. But just make sure that you're keeping by these derivative and antiderivative rules and don't try to make up or make something happen that doesn't work. Keep with the rules and make sure you're doing this correctly. The only way to get better at substitution is to keep on doing it over and over and over again. Things like the du over dx thing become much, much easier to do once you do them a few times and you start getting into the habit of recognizing what integrals require u substitution the more times you do it.